On today's episode of Taylor Talks Comics, we're going to be talking about martial law. Thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. Please share this video, comment down below, um, all those things. So today we're gonna be talking about martial law, and in particular, more specifically, this deluxe edition that it contains just about every martial law story you would need. So this was released by DC Comics, which is very interesting because a martial law character originally debuted on in the Epic line for Marvel Comics and then would later be released by Dark Horse and published by Dark Horse. And then after the series was done, for some reason, somehow, some way, DC Comics got the publishing rights. And I think that's a lot to do with the fact that Pat Mills and Kevin O'Neill, who are the ones that work on the series that created it, are retained the creative rights to it and the publishing rights. So they're able to farm out to whichever company they wanted. They started off with Epic, which Marvel's Epic line back in the day, not to be confused with their Epic collections from today, but my Epic was like their, their vertigo to DC, if you will. Um, it's not a direct comparison, but it's kind of like their, their imprint. A lot of those comics had more of an adult theme. But the most important aspect of the Epic line was that they, the creators retained the rights to it. So any stories they came out with on the Epic line, they were able to... Um, take those on to any other publishing entity that they wanted to. So it's, just, it's fascinating to me that DC Comics ended up putting out this edition. But So this is the deluxe edition. This is oversized. Um, let me find a... So here's a, uh, the first comic book I could find in my studio here. I did a, view, a video on this one too. But as you can see, so this is a standard comic book size. You can see it's taller and wider, oversized. Same size as like an omnibus you might find or uh, anything like that. So here's the dust jacket. And the dust jacket does match the artwork of the actual book itself. But it's like the, I guess, as a kid say, virgin version because it doesn't include any of the uh, writing on it. But it's a dust jacket, there's a spine, back cover. I'm a hero hunter, I hunt heroes. Haven't found any yet. It's kind of the uh, tagline for um, martial law. That's the inside of the dust jacket, the flaps. So, who is martial law? He is a character, here's the cover. Created by Pat Mills of 2080 fame. There's the great in papers. And the back ones are different too. I, lo I love some good in papers, so I'm, I appreciate these. But Pat Mills is the, they call him the, the godfather of British comics. He was one of the founders of 2080 and um, notorious for hating superheroes, notoriously known for hating superhero comics. Loves comic books, but hates superhero comic books. Then you have Kevin O'Neill, who is pretty well known for uh, British comic books. See? I just did, sorry, an overview of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. This is probably like the series he's most known for with Alan Moore if you want to check out that video. But Kevin O'Neill's pretty well known for the uh, British comics scene. He did a lot of work for 2080 as well as an artist. And this is their creation. So Pat Mills, the godfather of British comics, mixed with Kevin O'Neill, one of the most well-known British artists in comics, doing this series on U.S. Marshall. So U.S. Marshall is kind of 
Pat Mills Playground to do his commentary on how and why he hates superhero comic books. Now this series, let me get this my facts straight here, was originally published in, so this book came out in 2013, 1987. So this is late 80s, early 90s, and it, it carried through the 90s. And it was well before series like The Boys from Garth Ennis, which was like kind of the, his take on uh, who watches the Watchmen kind of thing of like, well, if we have superheroes, then who's watching the superheroes and making sure they're staying in line? This was well before that. And I think this is almost, this is one of my favorite renditions of that concept of the superheroes are really fascist, evil people that are corrupt, that are not their um, happy-go-lucky capes and cowls that you expect and you see when you see like your golden boy Superman flying through the sky kind of thing. This is probably one of my favorite renditions of that kind of commentary. And there's a lot of interesting notes of it. But U.S. Marshall is himself a superhero. So within this story, in the early parts before, when superheroes existed, there's all these science experiments happening. Imagine, like, Captain America with the super soldier serum. You do these experiments on him. There's one successful experiment that happened with, uh, here's Shock. Here's the company that did it. And Public Spirit is the one successful version of that. And uh, Marshall Law looked up to him himself as a kid. And then he was experimented on. Did some uh, time in the military. And he came out of it and hated the system, hated public spirit, hated superheroes. So he made it his goal to hunt the superheroes and to kill as many as he could find. That's kind of like his tagline. That's what, how do you make sense out of it? I'm a hero hunter, I hunt heroes, haven't found any yet. So he's kind of making a play on the fact that when he finds his heroes and kills them, they're not really heroes. They're all evil fascist scumbags. So this comic book is ultra violent. It's for mature audiences for sure. Um, it's got a lot of things you can expect with uh, mature comic books. You have sex, blood, violence, all that stuff. Drugs, drug usage. And as you can see from, let me get a, I probably passed up some of the better shots of U.S. Marshall character. So U.S. Marshall, and he, he's self-deprecating, self-harming kind of thing. You look at his, the character design, and they do commentary within this, within this sort of story, but he like wraps Barbara wire around his arm to kind of keep himself in, in check, kind of hurt himself, whatever it is. Um, and then he's got like the zipper across his neck as if he's like slitting his throat. And it's just, it all plays. In, and then he's got fear and loathing on his chest. <sighs> it's just a fantastic series and a fantastic commentary on, on uh, superheroes. And I think I might even do a series of videos on deconstructing the superhero genre because there's such great versions of it. And I know, like the boys, I wasn't a biggest fan of the boys. I felt like it was kind of, I don't know. I'm not here to talk about what comic books I don't like. But martial law I enjoyed. Um, I want to read Rick Veach's Brat Pack and The One. I feel like they're good com commentaries on that. And Max Immortal. Uh, Rick Veach is, Veach is the guy I'm really getting into. Uh, obviously, Alan Moore's Watchmen is a version of that. Martial law is a version of that. And... Um, I just think there's a, a good series of videos to do there. One of the things, though, and I talked about this. Here's some great Kevin O'Neill artwork, too. So, within this, you have the Golden Age, the Silver Age. Welcome to the Lead Age. So, this was kind of a commentary on the superhero ages. The Golden Age era of, like, Superman and uh, Batman Detective Comics. The Silver Age of Marvel coming into fruition. And then the Lead Age, which is kind of a commentary on where um, superhero comics then went to with uh, the Image Comic Days and that kind of thing. But 
one thing I love about Kevin O'Neill's artwork, I wonder if I find a good example of it, is just within the pages, there's so many like little Easter eggs of like graffiti on the walls or lettering that he does. And it makes such a fun reading experience because you end up reading more. I guess here's some examples. More than just the panels and stuff like that. So here's um, a lot of this is like the Marvel Age guys. So here you have a character that's like uh, a spoof on Thor, Spider Man. You have the Fantastic Four here. Um, there's Mr. Fantastic right there. And then you have like Captain America. But within here, you can see all these like little bits of lettering. And graffiti and I feel like these are just kind of like Kevin on oh geez I put the camera oh geez going for red um it's kind of ways of doing like little easter eggs and commentary on things and you just it makes you have to read every panel look closely at it and when you reread when you end up rereading it you'll find more and more little things and so so cool like his hammer's got the bucket. Just like those attention to detail and those little add-ons show you how much love and care he puts into his artwork. And it just makes for an awesome experience. The bottom of his boot. And it makes you think, uh, wonder, I mean, it's gotta be Kevin O'Neill doing that because there is a separate letterer uh, for each story. But I can't imagine the letterer is the one going into the artwork and graffitiing the walls like that. It's gotta be Kevin O'Neill. And there's like this, there's so much like, not only attention to detail within the character designs and the backgrounds and stuff, but like all the lettering. I don't know, this is really cool. But yeah, I highly recommend this series. Um, if you want a violent comic book that deconstructs the superhero genre, maybe you're in a, a place where you're kind of sick of keeps and cows. Or you just want to explore more. I don't know. But Martial Law, I highly recommend this book. This one's out of print and kind of hard to find, I will say. Um, you can't find the books uh, through trade paperbacks and that sort of thing. Um, but what I would recommend if you really want to find this book, which, again, I think everyone should, is to do like a saved search on eBay. Where you like just save search Martial Law Deluxe Edition. And they'll pop up. When, whenever one pops up, they'll email you. And you can try to get your hands on it. I ended up getting this one for under cover price, which was kind of remarkable. The cover price was 50 bucks on eBay. Because I found one and made an offer to a guy. And he took it. And I'm kind of lucky on that. Um, but yeah, so just do that. Do a little hunting. You can find this book for a good price. And I highly recommend it. Um, and th this book includes everything Martial Law ever did. Anything that Pat Mills and Kevin O'Neill did with Martial Law with the exception of the two crossovers, which were, I know he did a crossover with The Mask, with Dark Horse, and he did a crossover with another character. I can't, it's escaping my mind right now, but it was very weird. There are two, The Mask and then another character that I didn't feel like fit, fit in line with Marshall. I was kind of surprised there was a, was a um, crossover with them, but those two crossovers aren't included in here, I'm assuming for, because of rights issues. But other than that, it includes everything you need. For martial law. Now how do you reckon this? So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below with your thoughts on martial law or if you're able to find this book. Any other recommendation recommendations you have from Pat Mills or Kevin O'Neill and share the video with your friends. Thanks guys.